Welcome back all you guys at home. I hope you guys are enjoying the show. Chase and myself, we're just sharing some love between each other, actually. Before this ad break, we were just telling each other how much we love each other. I love you, Tracy. Do you the people? Yeah, if I have to. No, we do. I love really? it. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine what's like in my classroom? No, no, we do. Thank you. I feel so special right now. (laughs) Remember, guys, on our Facebook page, let us know all of your thoughts. Send us everything that you guys want us to assist you with. That is www.facebook.com forward slash Mindset TV. Because their exams are in process, I'm going to talk less and hand over to Tracy. Great. So, we were busy with the cannon and we got how how fast the cannon was going. So, let's go to the last part of that question. And the question says to us, Calculate the magnitude of the average net force that causes the cannon to come to rest. Now, I know it takes one second to come to rest. Now, be careful here because this question would only be worth three marks. And for a lot of you, when you look at average net force, I know you try and go, well, F net equals MA. That's fine, but I don't know how, how far it goes. I do know time. I could work out how far it goes, I suppose, but I don't need it. I could work out the acceleration, but then I have to work out the acceleration. I have to use the math. It gets complicated. We're not going to do that, okay? Because I'm working with momentum, it probably means I need to use this equation, the fact that F delta T equals change in momentum. They also asked me to define momentum at the beginning of the question. That tells me that I'm probably going to use that concept somewhere in the question. Okay, so now we go, well, we're looking at the cannonball. We want F net. It took one second to stop. Remember, change in momentum is equal to MVF minus MVI, which is actually MVF minus VI. Okay, so watch. That means I'm going to, let me put it, I think it's going to be better if I do this. Okay, so F net here, because the one, I can divide both sides by one and it's just going to disappear. It's going to be 1,250. My final velocity, because it stops, is zero. My initial velocity, and remember, we are looking at the force. So this is actually minus 0, 0, 8, because I worked that out. It's a vector. I must stick with that convention. So this means I'm going to have, okay, let me just show you, 1,250 times, that's minus times minus, which is a plus, so it's 0, 0, 0, 0, 8, okay, so we go 1,250 times 0, 0, 0.08, oh look, and it's 100 newtons. They, let's just see what they asked. Did they ask just for magnitude? Yes, that's great. They only wanted the magnitude because, um, so we don't need to worry about direction. And my magnitude worked out to be, or not, 100 newtons. Nice and easy. Okay. Really not so bad. Now, I do know, Longi, Mm -hmm. that you had a question that somebody wanted to know something. Yes. um... Maybe I can help. We actually have a question from Joseph, Mm -hmm. and he wants to know, how do we differentiate between positive and negative work? Joseph, that's a great question, okay? Now, so you wanted to know what basically what's the difference between if I get work that's positive, okay, and if I get work that's negative, negative, okay? Now, your negative work is done by forces that oppose motion, essentially. So negative work gets done by friction, okay? Always. Friction always does negative work. And what you can think of it is this way, is that negative work means that that force that's doing that work is taking energy, or basically it's taking kinetic energy out of my system. Or, or potential energy, but it's taking in it mechanical energy out the system. Okay, so it's it's making that mechanical energy change. And friction does this because remember, friction results in heat or sound, and that energy for the heat or sound has got to come from somewhere. Okay, and we always get negative work when the force acts at 180 degrees to the motion. Okay. 
your positive work is generally done by an applied force, okay, can be done by gravity, but your theta is zero, so, or between zero and 90. So your, this is the force that results in us adding mechanical energy to the system. So it increases the kinetic or it increases the potential. Okay, so your applied force acts at zero degrees and it does positive work. Your negative work is done by forces that act at 180 degrees and it takes energy out the system. And you never ever change negative work to positive and we never ever 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 substitute a negative value for a force in these questions, okay? Because the 180 degrees takes care of the negative. Okay, okay. so I'm hoping that helped a okay. little bit. Okay, cool. So, <gasps> yeah. Ooh. so <clears throat> this is such a nice question. Um, because we tend to focus on Doppler when it comes to sound and th small things moving. And then they go and put something like this in the exam and we sit there and go, mm, I don't know what's going on. It's all right, let's do this one. So the velocities of galaxies relative to the Earth can be determined by studying the red shift observed in their spectrums. The table below shows the velocities of three galaxies, D, E, and F, relative to Earth. That means Earth is my stationary point, okay? We're moving, but we're comparing their movement to our movement, okay? So, what is meant by red shift? Now, red shift is what we see when, red shift is the shifting zone, is the moving of an emission spectrum of a star or galaxy to the red side, I don't know what I was saying there, side of the spectrum, okay? So it's when our emission spectrum shifts, okay, and we get the, the lines that we're expecting to get tend to be more, they, it's not an emission spectrum. Yes, it is an emission spectrum. What am I saying? Um, they go to the red side. So the pattern stays the same, but it shifts more to the right, okay, when we look at them. State. Oh, look, I did this. State the type of spectrum observed for, for the different galaxies while it's in emission spectrum. Okay. Guys, you probably haven't done photoelectric effect, or maybe you have, but in photoelectric effect, you spend a lot of time going through emission and, ab and observe ab absorption spectrums, or spectra, as is the correct plural. Um, but don't stress too much about it for Doppler, okay? They're not going to ask in a lot of detail then. And this is the question I really like. Come down. Which galaxy shows the greatest redshift? In other words, which one will, will move the furthest to the red? So if we go here, remember, redshift means that the frequency of the light is increasing. So we're looking for the one where the frequency of light increases the most. What plays the biggest role in how much the frequency increases? the velocity at which it moves. So now look at this. D is going at 1,5 times 10 to the 7. E is 1,5, 2 times 10 to the 7. And F is 2,44. This is traveling at the greatest velocity. Because it has the biggest velocity, biggest speed, it's going to have the greatest redshift. Okay? So when we go here and we say, well, which galaxy? F. Y. F is moving at the highest speed. Okay, and the greater the speed, sure, I'm not sure any of you can read that, but just go with it. <laughs> All right, nicely. The, there we go, now you can read it. The greater the increase 
and the observed velocity, therefore greatest red shift. It's a little hard to know how much you need to write when we don't have a mark allocation. That does make, should I make it so you can actually see the answer? How does that look? You know what? This thing doesn't like me. There we go. So we're going to be gentle with it now. It's a nice machine. Nice machine. Okay. There we go. And so we know it was F. Okay. Guys, just be careful with how you write that. <laughs> Look at how many marks it's worth before you start writing an essay. If it's only worth two marks, please don't write like four paragraphs. If it's worth three or four marks, obviously you need more information. Generally, this would probably be worth about two marks. Um because they would want that it's going at the highest speed and that means a greater increase in velocity, in frequency. Okay, all right. But, of course, we need to do a normal Doppler question because that's what we're going to get. So, an ambulance is traveling towards a hospital at a constant velocity of 30 meters per second. Great, the siren of the ambulance is 400 hertz. Take the speed of sound in air to be 340. The diagram shows the wavefronts of the sound produced from the siren as a result of motion. Excellent. There we go. So now before I... Just go. Don't stress. Don't stress, Trace. Don't stress. You know what? If any of my learners right now are watching, they go, it's okay, ma'am. That's what happens in class. It's fine. Technology doesn't like me, and I like technology. You like technology. I'm a science teacher. Of course I like technology. Okay. How That's rude. Awesome. Moving on. <laughs> so, the little block over here, which is about as good as I can draw on ambulances, shows the ambulance. Okay, now remember with Doppler, they, the wavelengths get closer together when it's in the direction it's moving towards. So, this ambulance is actually moving in that direction. Okay, because now they say which side of the diagram X or Y is the hospital situated. Well, they told me in the question that it's traveling towards a hospital. So when we look at my diagram, that means it's got to be towards x. Why? Because the wavelength is getting smaller. Okay, the wave fronts are getting closer, or the wave fronts are getting together, it's closer together, whatever, however you want to do that. Now they want to know, they ask you to calculate the frequency of the sound heard. So, velocity in air, 340 meters per second. The source, which is the ambulance, is traveling at 30 meters per second. The frequency of the source is 400. They want to know what the listener hears. Okay, so, and the listener is stationary. Remember, we start with the equation Fs, and we write the equation exactly as it's given on our information sheets. Okay? Next step, we get rid of the plus and the minuses. Okay? So now it's about us remembering whether the frequency is going to increase or decrease, because that's how we decide whether we plus or minus. Okay? So, my listener isn't moving. So I'm just going to put 340 at the top, because plus or minus naught is still 340. My source is moving, but I'm going to sort that out in a second. My source is going at 30. Just go with me with what I'm doing. And my frequency there is 400. Now, oh wait, that should be FL. Sorry, that should be FL. Now I've got to decide whether I'm going to plus or minus. The source is coming towards the listener. The frequency must increase. In order for the frequency to increase, the frequency that the source has got must be multiplied by a number bigger than 1. So my bracket must give me a number bigger than 1. So at the top of my bracket, the top of my fraction, I have 340, which means at the bottom of my fraction, I must have less than 340, so I'm going to minus the 310. Okay? So that means that to do this, I'm going to go 340 divided by 310 times by 400, and there's not a chance I can do that in my head, 
My mass isn't that good, 340 divided by 310, and you see it gives me a number bigger than 1, times by 400. Look, 438, okay, comma, 71. It's bigger than I started with, exactly what I expected, because it was going towards the listener. Okay, so let's see the next question. Great. Ooh, the next question is wonderful. A nurse is sitting next to the driver in the passenger seat of the ambulance as it approaches the hospital. Calculate the wavelength of the sound heard by the nurse. Now life gets interesting because, whoops, you have to make a decision, okay? For part C, I want wavelength. Wavelength is going to be calculated using this equation. V is easy. I need to make a decision about what frequency gets put in there, and I want wavelength. So, nurse is in the ambulance. You have a choice of two wavelengths. Either the 400 hertz or the 438,71. Don't get suckered here, okay? Because a lot of you are going to go, oh, I worked out the 438, it must be the 438. Mm -mm. The nurse is in the ambulance with, with the ambulance, with the driver. The nurse is not moving relative to the siren. The siren and the nurse are moving together. That means the nurse hears the wavelength at 400 hertz. Okay, be careful. They try to trick you here, which means wavelength is 340 divided by 400. Okay, divided by 400 gives me 0, 0,85. It's relatively short, but that's what I expected. It's quite a high frequency, 0, 0,85 meters. Be careful, be careful, be careful, be careful. Okay, think on that note, we're going to take another break. I think we're going to do some of my favorite questions. Wow. I can't wait to see all Tracy's favorite questions, other difficult questions. <laughs> Don't say I did not warn you. No. Go on, drink some water, refresh your brains, because Tracy's favorite difficult question is coming up after this ad break. <laughs> 